Good morning, folks. As the Quake Watch officially begins tonight, we have uptick rumblings across the planet, from New Zealand up through the East Timor region, all the way up to Japan, where a moderate tremor this morning hit the 6 magnitude mark on multiple readers, had a 5-pointer a little too far off the Alaskan seismic zone, right in the middle of the North Pacific. Here we go, folks. Top story of the day. They've turned my favorite buoy back on. Now, I'm pretty good at knowing what's data error or what's a broken buoy. This just never hit my eye that way. The flanking buoys showed three years of odd readings suggesting seafloor movement. So, assumably, last year when they added the middle buoy to an already clustered area, they might have been expecting something. They sure got it. Those who were here at the end of last year remember the sea depth kept dropping meters at a time. Around 600 meters total, or just under 2,000 feet. Sea depth decrease on these charts means either the surface is breaking the laws of physics and sitting lower than the water all around it, or the sea floor is rising. You can see where they've cut off the readings. It is back on today, readings in the 3500 meter range indicating about another thousand feet of movement. Updates coming as necessary. On to the notion that wild weather sites are about to become the norm, not just warming. This is ice boulders in Michigan. Also linked below is an outstanding drought recap and update. The visuals, as you see, are numerous and helpful. Basically, these snowstorms that have been cutting across the central states have their silver lining. Cyclone Haruna puttering out in the Indian Ocean while the area identified two days ago off the northwest Australian coastline has actually spawned two cyclones. Rusty is going to cut through the continent. He and his unnamed younger sister are going to be major news story most of the week. Coming back to the snowfall, Another storm shooting across the central USA. Massive low, sitting on Texas, counterclockwise inward pool creating the convergence of pressure, moisture, and electric potential. It's going to have severe weather in the Gulf states through the night. Also major snow on the north and west edges of the convergence. Space weather, Muon Network shows cosmic ray density teasing the 101 line for a third straight day. You might remember three and a half days ago, a few filaments on the northern disk began popping. Tough to tell which has struck, but this density increase in the solar wind indicates a very weak impact from the plasma, causing only minor inductions and energetic flux. Sunspots are on the eastern hemisphere as we see it. Down south, we have two bipolar regions. One was just born last night, developing very quickly. We'll have to keep watch here. Up north, we appear to have a lone gunman running the show, tough to see if there's any strong positive magnetism. You remember, a central umbral field section disappeared and it has not returned. You see red dominating the disc and that's these dark coronal holes you see on GOES and the SDO. Not quite facing the earth yet, but with the full moon hours away and four conjunctions set to follow in an eight day span, we're calling our second major watch of 2013. You'll remember the 2013 major quake list so far. And the bunching up in early February, the highlighted quakes, fell during the only other major watch we've had this year. Beyond that, we have active regions turning in. We say goodbye to a mega filament headed west while another shows herself on the eastern limb. I'll leave you with Stellarium, JPL, and more weather from around the world. Eyes open. No fear at 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.